When the Solomon Islands government signed a security pact with China earlier this year, the shock was felt across the region. In the Solomons, it's provoked anger, especially among young people. Amy Bainbridge reports from Honiara. <laughs> The growing population of Solomon Islands is one of the youngest in the world. Seven in ten people are under 30. For them, jobs and education are top of mind. I completed three years of studying and found it was difficult to find a job. My biggest challenge as a young person is resisting the temptation to go out drinking with friends. That's why I try to come here to the courts in the weekends. The youth population here is projected to rise by 120,000 by 2030. That's about one and a half times the population of the capital, Honiara. There's only 4,000 jobs in this country every year. And there's 18,000 graduates coming out from overseas, from universities. Father Mark Miswasi works with youth groups in Honiara. About 1,000 young people are going through the church's sport, spiritual, cultural and academic programs to help them stay out of trouble. Many drop-up students from grade 12s, some of them in university, they are roaming around this, the city, I mean the town right now, because there is no job opportunity. Riots in Honiara's Chinatown last November were broadly blamed on disaffected youth. So the initial peaceful protest that happened before the riots was really about the power that the provinces have versus the national government over key decisions. So when the national government changed um, bilateral relations from Taiwan to China, um, part of the resentment about that was the decision. The riots have been used as justification for joint police training drills between Solomon Islands and China in Honiara. After signing a secretive security agreement with Beijing, the Prime Minister now wants a more permanent Chinese police arrangement and the relationship between the two countries is rapidly deepening. We welcome, of course, the new addition to our team of development partners, the People's Republic of China, who have already demonstrated their genuine intention to be worthy partner in the development of our country in less than three years of our relationship. 30-year-old Millicent Barty is a designer and innovation advocate. After returning from a year's scholarship abroad, she's alarmed by the direction her country is heading. It frustrates me that, you know, a solution is to arm our police force. You know, that's not a solution. That will never be a solution for Solomon Islands. I think it all depends on our government, whether this relationship will help our country. But what I think is the government should do more consultations with its people. This large sports stadium behind me is being built by China for the 2023 Pacific Games here in Honiara. While people here say they do want more infrastructure, opinions on this project are divided, particularly among young people. I know it's in, in, they're building it in time for 2023 games, which is great, but what happens after that two weeks um, when every, all the athletes leave? The other stadiums that are built by uh, China and other funders, uh, it'd be great for uh, Solomon Islanders, especially uh, we could play indoors. Uh, we don't have that facility here before. Some young people see Peter Kenaluria as a future Prime Minister. I think the situation here is dire. Young people face a really uncertain future. So we try to subsidise fees for students, paying half of their tuition. And in the USP, University of South Pacific, as well as the Solomon Islands National uh, University, 
Uh, I also help um, out in them uh, getting jobs through the seasonal workers program in Australia. We don't need that security agreement. Um, and it's something that, that we see as being beneficial to China. National elections are due next year, but the government has said it may look to extend the parliamentary term by one more year. It's unclear exactly how it will ensure young people feel their voices are heard. The government and youth ministry did not agree to an interview. I think the next election is very important for us young people. I think it's a chance to really um, get the leaders that we, we believe that can really help us. We should be prioritizing economic prospects for our young people, and that means agriculture. That means investing more in our arts. That means finding avenues for our beautiful cottage industries, finding a way for, for us to export.